Hello and welcome to this video in which I look at the origins of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. There's a lot of controversy surrounding some of Shakespeare's plays. Some analysts have looked at the language of the entire works of Shakespeare and said that it's very unlikely that he wrote all of his plays, that some of them are just so different in style that, um, and for other reasons as well, that there's the suggestion that perhaps he didn't write them. Well, let's assume he did write Romeo and Juliet. That still doesn't mean that all of it was his own original idea. These days, if you came up with an idea for um, a, a play or a novel or a film, and it borrowed heavily from uh, a pre-existing film or novel or play, then you could be in trouble and probably would be in trouble in terms of copyright and people suing you and um, all of that sort of thing. But in Shakespeare's day and before, it was very different. And you'll see quite a fascinating chain of events um, unraveled in this video. Because Romeo and Juliet was actually written by an Italian writer called Matteo Bandello, who was alive from 1480 to 1562. He wrote a lot of short stories or novellas, not quite short stories, is it, but a, a short novel. Um, and often his stories were based on real life events, which he had heard of through his contemporaries and friends. And he wrote Giulietta e Romeo, um, the story we now know as Romeo and Juliet. That was one of his stories. It uh, appeared as a short story in a, a collection of stories. And um, he is the original writer. Now, quite an interesting um, event then that this guy created the story and wrote it uh, in Italian a long time before Shakespeare himself um, wrote and, and published and performed Romeo and Juliet. After that, though, we have this next chain in the link. Uh, in 1562, Arthur Brooke, an English poet, translated the story of Romeo and Juliet into um, English, into an English uh, poem. And he changed it slightly. He differed the endings for the nurse and the friar from what the uh, original Italian version did. And he published them like this. And you can see the uh, on the screen there the, the book, uh, the front cover, The Tragical History of Romeo and Juliet, uh, written in Italian um, by Bandello and now in English. So it was um, published as a translation, but was more a, a paraphrase of the original story. Arthur Brooke, though, died the year after publishing this. He actually drowned in a shipwreck, uh, quite tragically. And the story, therefore, was in the public domain and, and wasn't, you know, Arthur Brooke wasn't really, um, didn't have ownership of it anymore. So not long after that, then, in 1567, uh, the English novelist William Painter translated the story into prose, into uh, a novel. He was alive from 1540 to 1595, and on the screen you can see his publication, The Palace of Pleasure, which was a prose version of the story published in 1567. Following that, then we get to Shakespeare, who um, historians suggest... He wrote Romeo and Juliet around 1590 to 1595. He stuck closely to the original story, but did develop some of the minor characters, such as Paris and Mercutio, and published his first copy in 1594. So you can see that when we look at a text, and uh, particularly very old texts that were not under the constraints of copyright like they are, uh, texts are today, the origins can be quite enlightening. And this also helps us understand why Shakespeare, the English writer, set the play in Italy, because obviously the original story was set in Italy as it was an Italian story by an Italian writer. The quite exciting thing is the suggestion that Bandello was perhaps writing about a true story. Bandello based a lot of his novellas and short stories on two categories. He either wrote about um, famous historical um, events or poetry 
and classical poetry from history, or he based it on stories he had heard passed down and passed to him by his friends and contemporaries. So there is a suggestion that Romeo and Juliet could be based on a true story, but certainly by the time it filtered down through the translation into English poetry, the translation into English prose, and then Shakespeare's translation into English um, drama, the story was very fictional. But quite an interesting, enlightening um, event, I think, in, in how the story came to Shakespeare's hands. And of course, the translation goes on, because um, if you're a student, I'm sure you've watched the, the Baz Luhrmann film version from 96, and that could be seen as another translation um, taking the story into another medium. So it's been a very, very popular story for, you know, 500 years that has passed through a number of different writers before getting to Shakespeare and since Shakespeare has passed on to a number of different uh, creative talents who have produced it in different mediums. If you found this video useful, please subscribe. I'm going to do the ultimate guide to Romeo and Juliet over a series of 20 or 30 videos. And this is just one of them, so uh, thanks for watching.